school's English was really fantastic and everybody wanted to emulate him. Uh, from there, I started working as a temporary ungraded clerk with the former government of Northern Region in the Ministry of Finance before I was selected or elected to read law at Amadvello University to read part one of the by examination. You know, I saw in the newspaper they were advertising at that Institute of Administration was I read that they wanted to take people to study law. Yes. So, being my clothes friend, I went asking, have you seen this? He said, no, he hasn't seen it. Okay. I am interested. Are you interested? Well, he hesitated a little, but I uh, persuaded him and convinced him this is the right thing to do. So he accepted it. We filled the form. Fortunately, we were accepted. So we went to the Institute of Administration where we started uh, reading law. Honestly, I was merely thinking of becoming the, uh, the highest point one could think of at that time was to go and read uh, a course at the, a, at the ABU then, not ABU, it wasn't even the university then, yes. Institute of Administration that area, yeah. uh, that is a senior executive officer's course. That was the highest thing I was thinking of. So when that uh, my friend came with that form, uh, I, don't, I don't know, and then I kept praying and then and do you know Mark you also, I was a friend, of my father's friend was the then Minister of Establishments and Training. He was in charge of training of lawyers. You know, he, he was the Minister of Establishments and Training in the former old northern region. Yeah. But then because I wanted to do things right, things right, I even gave my address through my father at Kano, at Kano. And they had to send the letter inviting me for the interview, not through the minister in the, where I was staying in his house, but they sent it to my father's address in Kano, and a senior brother of mine brought the papers to me. And then I attended the interview, I passed, and I told the minister that this is what has happened. There were 12 provinces then in northern region. So two from Sokoto, two from Kano, and one each from the other 10 uh, provinces. So we were about um, 14 or 15 who went there. And then at the end of the day, those who passed for the uh, part one examination were about uh, seven or so. And seven of us went to England to complete the studies. While at the United Kingdom, he was at the School of Oriental and African Studies, University of London, from 1964 to 1967. He was also at the Inns of Court School of Law during that period. Was there such a difference between when you were in Amadou Bele University and when you went to the UK? No, 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 there was no difference whatsoever, really. And then uh, I was very lucky also. That same Mohammed Ibrahim, the one who facilitated my joining the primary school, mm. was working for the BBC. And then also he was classmate to now Ambassador Aminu Bashir Wali, our Nigerian ambassador to China. He is now currently in China, the Nigerian ambassador. Mm. They were class, they were schoolmates of mine. And we come from the same district at that time. So I had no problem whatsoever. Uh, they met me at the airport and they took me to their house. Uh, Mohammed Ibrahim was working for the BBC, he was a journalist. They took me, you know, I, I, was in the, I was in their house. Eventually we ended up in the house of uh, the former Minister of uh, Defence, Alhaji Inouwada. He's still alive. Uh, he had a house in London at that time. And um, he happened to be an uncle to Ambassador Bashir, I mean Bashir Wali. So he had a house and then at one time or the other we moved, we moved his house, we were not even paying rent. 
He returned to Nigeria in 1967 and was at the Nigerian Law School between 1967 and 1968. Upon graduation in 1968, he went straight into private legal practice for eight years. In fact, he was the first indigent from Kanu State to do so. While many see his venturing into private practice as part of his adventurous self, his lordship tells us the real reasons behind the move. But the reason mainly was this. As a, what I, will, I call legal trainee, that is those of us who were reading law at that time, mm. our allowance was 57 pounds. No tax, nothing. And that is what we are getting. And then when you come to join the civil service, mm. the salary was 720 per annum, that is scale A1 in those days. Mm. That is 60 pounds per month. You will have to pay rent. You will have to pay for car. You have to take a car and then loan your senior service. And then people look upon you to be really somebody who has made it in those days. And then I thought, you know, I calculated a little bit and I found that after paying the rent, paying for the car, and uh, you know, dressing up as a senior civil servant, etc., what one ends up with was not more than uh, 12 pounds for feeding and for everything. And then with the number of siblings that I have, knowing fully well also I was the first one coming from a large family to travel to England and to be a senior, servant, senior civil servant, I felt that um, I could not cope if I joined the public service. So luckily also for me, there was a senior lawyer who was senior to me about three years, although coming from my degree, Al -Haji, late Alhaji Kaloma Ali, at one time he came to Lagos and he was looking for somebody who would uh, join him in the private practice in Kano. So without any hesitation, I opted. His Lordship's first appearance in court as a lawyer was in Katsina before Honorable Justice Saliho Modibo Alpha Belgore, GCON, former Chief Justice of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who was then a magistrate. There was a uh, civil matter between Laji Haruna Danja and Saruki Musawa, the Mana Usman. Mana Usman was brother to the Emir Usman Nagogo and was the Jesuit of Musawa. The two of them, Harun and Danja and Mana Usman, they were involved in some business, but not together. It must be something about rivalry. It's a simple case. I read the pleadings of all the parties. I was sitting as a district judge, which they call a magistrate in the north, when dealing with civil matters. And there were so many senior lawyers for other cases. But the one for Arun Danja was called uh, Alaji Gaji. Alaji Gaji was a leading lawyer in the north. But other lawyers in court were late lawyer Tani, Razak Jr., Abdul Mumin, Razak. And Dahiru was the one to appear for Saruki Musawa. He was just a few days old at the bar. But what Gaji did was to say, I appear for the plaintiff and with me are, he mentioned nearly every judge, I mean every lawyer in court. Naturally, being the first time he will appear in court, he was so afraid. And he said he was holding brief for Kaloma Ali, in whose chambers he was. And uh, he was only asked to come and ask for adjournment. I said, I'm not adjourning. I fixed this case for hearing. And I must hear it today. But I'll be dealing with other cases. If you have not read your brief, go and read it. I'll give you about two hours ago. So I continue with other cases. They came, he still begged me. I said, well, don't be funny. You are a lawyer already. So you have to present your case. 
So Gaji introduced himself. Ari Gaji was famous or notorious, I wouldn't know what to say. He called his first witness. So I called on the cross-examination. I first asked one or two questions from the witness to put the way all right for him, because I knew it was a bad case. They just wanted to harass the man. First witness, second witness, third witness. Gaji saw that the case was not going on very well for them. He asked for a gentleman. I said, Mr. Gaji, last time I came about six months ago, I said, this case must go on. If you are not going on, I will strike out to your case. You have to start afresh. I said, Mr. Mustafa, what is your opinion about this? He said, well, if it's adjournment, I said, anyhow, I'm not adjourning. Gaji said, I closed my case. I said, yes. Mr. Mustafa, do you have witnesses? He said, none. So I rose, went to my chambers, 20 minutes, just about a page, a page and a half. I wrote my ruling, dismissed the case, awarded cost. So he was so happy that he won his first case and ran back to Kano. The time he spent in Kano as a lawyer was as dramatic as it was exciting. A senior advocate of Nigeria and a colleague of his 43 years ago tells us more. He was a very social person. He was a very social person. In fact, one of the reasons I said I never thought he would ever agree to be a judge. That huh? Suddenly he will disappear from, <laughs> from all these pranks. <laughs> it's a mystery. It's because God has his way of uh, dealing with us as human beings. And he had another nickname. <laughs> Save for his Afro. His Afro. <laughs> the Afro lawyer. <laughs> Okay, I never knew he could cut his hair short. <laughs> in 1976, he was appointed the Attorney General of Kaduna State in what looked like a military coup. When Justice Muhammad Nasser Saladiman Kazina, who was also the, the second president of the Court of Appeal, uh, was made a Justice of the Supreme Court from Attorney General of Kaduna State, then a vacancy arose and Umaru Abdullahi was made the Attorney General of Kaduna State. So when he qualified to become a judge after 10 years, then he was appointed a judge of the High Court of then Kaduna State. So he wanted to go to the bench. And um, the governor, then governor of Kaduna State, said, no, I can't let you go unless you find a stable person to come and take your place at the Attorney General of Kaduna State. I was minding my business as, the, uh, as a private practitioner. And then suddenly, General Sani Abacha and General Babangida, Somehow they came to Kano at one time or the other. They said I want, I was wanted. They wanted to see me in Kaduna, so we would travel to Kaduna almost together. And then it was there. Then they said that uh, I had no option other than to accept. The governor of North Central State, late Group Captain Usman Jibril, may so rest in peace, said, "Look, I'm not going to swear you in." until you find a new attorney general for me. I said, fine, no problem. Then I started thinking. Of course, you were the first to come into my mind because I knew he was available. There are other people I considered. He too was linking, was thinking about other people. So the following day, I went back to him. I said, look, I have found an attorney general for you. He said, who is it? I said, Dahir uh, Mustafa. He said, perfect, that will do. So I called him. I said, whatever you are doing, you better put it aside and come over to Kaduna. I want to see you. He said, what is up? I said, I'm not going to tell you until you come. So he came to Kaduna and we spent the night. The following morning, 
I took him to the to the governor. I said, hey, here is your attorney general. He said, perfect. He said, I'm not going to let you go. I'm going to try, try you in straight away. I said, what about me? He said, now you can no go. <laughs> so that's how we, 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 we got into the uh, problem solved. And he came in, he was sworn in, he came in the reported, and I left to the high court. I was appointed uh, the military governor of Kaduna State, and he was my attorney general, actually. Honorable Justice Dairu Mustafa attended several law conferences and seminars, nationally and internationally. He held many positions outside the judiciary. They include board member of NEPA, from 1974 to 1976, joint editor, Law Report of Northern Nigeria from 1976 to 1979, member, Emirate Council from 1969 to 1975, member, Kano Metropolitan Council from 1967 to 1975. He is also a life member of the body of benches. He has traveled to many countries and performed the Hajj many times. What kind of a man is Honorable Justice Dahiru Mustafa. Honorable Justice Dahiru Mustafa, all the, for all the period I have known him, he has been a very lively fellow, uh, very considerate, very respectful, and uh, also serious in any assignment that he was given. I know uh, Justice Dahiru Mustafa even as uh, a little young boy growing up uh, in the village was a very